السلام عليكم شباب تحياتي وتمنياتي لكم بالسلامة والأمان Our lecture today we are going to talk about the gate abnormalities we have two more lectures we have gate abnormalities and the movement disorders ونخلص إن شاء الله الفصل الأول gate abnormalities many neurological disorders are associated with an abnormal gait and observing a patient walk and analysis of patient gait is of a major importance in neurological diagnosis. It is also an important element of assessing disability. Observing a patient as they walk into the consulting room can be very informative. Neurogenic gait disorder need to be distinguished from those due to skeletal abnormalities. يعني إحنا مرات نشوف gait abnormalities بس هو مو due to neurogenic احتمال عند skeletal abnormalities مثلا arthritis or joint problem. And usually in those patients with joint problem they have they will have pain and limping during movement. نسمي antalgic gait. So gait disorders can range from arthritis to neurological conditions. And sometimes even as simple as ill-fitting shoes may produce an abnormal gait. Various patterns of weakness, loss of coordination, and proprioceptive with sensory loss produce an abnormal gait. Gait that do not fit, sometimes you should gait, cannot fit with either pattern which may be due to psychiatric illness, yani functional gait, and are usually incompatible with any anatomical or physiological deficit. The legs should be exposed, so we are, when we are going to examine the gait properly, we have to expose the leg adequately, should be bare feet, happy, ask the patient to walk away from the examiner, and then to come back again. There are many possibilities. يعني إحنا من نشوف gait abnormalities. Patient ممكن يكون عنده CVA or stroke. اللي نشوفه hemiplegic gait مثلاً. أو due to other neurological conditions. أيضاً يسوينه abnormal gait. Or sometimes the cause of gait disorder due to degenerative disease. مثل ما قلنا arthritis for example. Or even he may have vertigo and inner ear disorders. And sometimes foot conditions with simple as ill-fitting shoes may produce an abnormal gait. And مهم بالنسبة لنا هو neurogenic causes of gait disorders. And we have eight basic pathological gait due to neurological conditions that we need to have them. Starting with the hemiplegic gait, hemiplegic gait, which is the commonest gait disorders and also we call pyramidal gait due to upper motor neuron lesion اللي نشوفه دائما أهل stroke or CVA the patient stands with a unilateral weakness on the affected side arm is flexed, adducted and rotated leg on the same side is in extension and plantar flexion of the foot and toes and when the patient is walk, the patient will hold his or her arm and internally to one side and drag, drag, يعني jerk, drag his or her affected leg in a circumcircle, يعني circumduction, يعني استدارة صير مشي تبيها استدارة due to weakness of distal muscles, foot drop, and extensor hypertonia in the lower limbs. So the commonest gait disorder or hemiplegic اللي نشوفه عادة بالstroke or CVA ممكن نشوفه in two forms either severe hemiplegic gait اللي هذا شرحنا عنه هذا severe form or sometimes mild hemiplegic gait and mild hemiparesis اللي راح نشوف only loss of normal arm swing and slight circumduction which may be the only abnormalities in mild hemiplegic gait مثل ما راح نشوفها في الفيديو This is one that you see in hemiplegia where the arm is typically in this posture and the leg on the affected side is typically somewhat stiff and they will then have a gait that looks something like this 
This is circumduction, circumduction of the foot. El circumduction the of the foot, foot, foot during movement. A circle like that is what makes this gait so characteristic. If the condition is mild, the hand may not be. So this is a severe like form of hemiplegic gait. Now he will go to demonstrate the mild. Circumduction. This is the mild. The hand may not be swinging normally the way the other hand swings. And that is called the hemiplegic gait. It's important to understand. This is a patient with hemiplegic gait, but this is a mild form. He got stuck, right-sided. So the lower limbs is affected very clearly with circumduction during movement, but the upper limb is not flexed, it's extend. We call it hemiplegic gait, pyramidal gait. The second type of gait disorder is diplegic gait. Or spastic gait. The man will be asked, well, hemiplegic gait, even who has spastic gait, but it is a unilateral spastic gait. Here, when in diplegic gait, it's a bilateral gait disorder, a bilateral, we call it spastic gait. Patient have involvement of both sides with spasticity, I would say, spastic gait in the lower extremities, which is more worse than the upper extremities. The patient walks on a narrow base dragging, you jerk, dragging both legs and scrapping, scrapping, actually, scrapping the toes with difficulty in, bend, in bending the knees and the feet looks as if they were glued to the ground. And by tilting the pelvis, the foot is raised from the ground, it associated with circumduction of the leg. Taban had even diplegic gait and semi-cerebral Palsy gait, cerebral palsy gait, or spastic gait, commonly seen in cerebral palsy. And sometimes even we could see a scissor gait, scissor gait, when there is extreme tightness of hip adductors, which can cause legs to cross the midline, semi scissor gait. should mention in the context of the hemiplegic gait is the gait that's commonly seen in cerebral palsy. It's a, it's a diplegic gait, if you will, with hemiplegia on both sides. And it's a gait that I'm sure you've, you've seen often in children and in adults uh, affected by this from childhood. Uh, typically, the patients have extensor spasm and almost seem to be walking on tiptoe. And although they have some circumduction, they have a lot of abductor spasm that keeps their feet close together. So they tend to be walking on so tiptoe. So this is a spastic gait? of diplegic like gait. And the adduction is a prominent feature. In fact, in some parts of the world where children do not get adductor releases, you might actually this see is a scissor a gait. scissors gait, where the leg swings all the way over to the other side. The other important gait, well, Parkinsonian gait, which is seen commonly in Parkinson's disease, or in semi and gait, or shuffling gait, or had the propulsive gait. It is characterized by stooping, stooping, and in any stooping, rigid posture, rigid posture, so I don't flexion dystonia and Parkinson's disease, and the head and neck are bent forward. Steps tend to become faster and shorter. The patient will have rigidity. the features of Parkinson's disease. We can see under rigidity, a bradykinesia, a tremor, a mask phase and difficulty in initiating steps and etc. The whole upper extremity is also in flexion with the fingers usually extended. The patient walks with a slow little steps, slow and little steps, known as marsh epitis pass, and yani walk of a little steps, marsh with loss of swinging movement of the arms. Usually, when a normal person walks, they will have a normal swinging movement of the arms. So, in patient with Parkinson, Parkinsonian gait, he will have loss of normal swinging movement of the arms. The patient may show an involuntary inclination to take accelerating steps, known as fistination, fistination, etc. Seen in Parkinson disease or any other condition causing. Parkinsonism. It's a posture that's characterized by universal flexion. Every joint is flexed, and the patient typically will take very small steps. 
This is called a fascinating gait. The French call it the marche à petit pas, the walk of little steps. And there might also be an associated tremor with the gait. Yes, we could The patient have. may have a myriad other abnormalities related to the Parkinson's that we're not going to cover.